Well, so does Vladimir Putin have the backing of his own people, the Russian people, to invade Ukraine? It's hard to tell. It's not exactly a democracy as we would recognize it. Uh, in an interview this week, former United States ambassador to Ukraine, William Taylor, said, quote, uh, he does make these threats, but he may not have the backing that he needs at home. So let's talk to him. Former United States ambassador to Ukraine, William Taylor, joining us now. Bill, great to see you. Thanks for being with us again. So does Vladimir Putin, as basically the absolute ruler of Russia for a generation now, how, how important is public opinion uh, to him in this particular scenario, in the decision uh, to go to war or not? Terry, it's a, it's a good question. It's a very good question. This is a, this is a dictatorship. Uh, so there is no doubt that he can ignore public opinion. However, uh, his his uh, rule may be more fragile than than he thinks. I mean, you take a look around. Um, look what happened in a what he thought was a very stable neighbor in Kazakhstan, um, and there were a lot of people that went to the streets that uh, that opposed the longtime dictator there. So he has to worry. There's there's some evidence, Terry, that uh, that that they are worried. Uh, the the uh, the propaganda. Um, that, that the Russian people are getting today um, is not the same propaganda that they were getting in 2014, that Ian was just describing. In 2014, the Ukrainians were the enemy. The Ukrainians were the people that were oppressing Russians and, and suppressing the Russian language and were neo-Nazis in Kiev. And, and uh, this was the, it, would, it was the enemy. Ukraine was the enemy. That's not the case today. Today, the enemy is NATO. Uh, the enemy is the United States. And that suggests to me that he realizes, President Putin realizes that the Russian people are not enthusiastic about fighting Ukrainians. Ukraine is uh, what they thought was a brotherly nation. Now, the, the fraternal nature of the of the is, is not requited. That is, we 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 know that President Zelensky, uh, when he was was uh, presented with this idea of uh, the brotherly relations between Russia uh, and Ukraine, President Zelensky said, "Yeah, brotherly, like Cain and Abel." Um, the, my point is, it's not clear to me, based on what we can see right now, that the Russian people are so supportive of an invasion that kills a lot of Russians, a lot of Ukrainians, a lot of Ukrainian military and civilians. So this is, uh, this is a risky prospect for Mr. Putin. That's really interesting that, that, that therefore he's had to make NATO uh, the enemy and uh, demonize NATO and say that it's directly threatening uh, Russian security and the Russian people. You just heard from our correspondent on the ground there, Ian Panel. Uh, he's in Ukraine. He's at the front lines earlier. He's back in Kiev. Uh, and one of the things he said which struck me is that now people really seem to be following this every jot and tittle of it, every story, every day, because it seems like it's imminent. Do you think the United States is tough enough at this stage? Uh, it, it, we hear a lot of the diplomatic speak properly so from the Secretary of State. Do you think the message has gone to Russia that if he does this, basically, you know, we're going to be able to end his economy for a while, and he, that, that might destabilize his rule as well? How do you read the Biden approach to Putin in this moment? Terry, I think uh, just uh, the clip you showed this just a moment ago about uh, uh, with the head uh, Secretary Blinken and Minister Lavrov um, was very interesting. Um, Secretary Blinken looked to me pretty determined. He did not look so happy. Uh, whereas uh, Minister Lavrov, um, you know, he's uh, he's a little more a little more smiling here. That's a good picture right there. Secretary Blinken looks pretty determined, pretty grim. Um, even in that picture there. So, so I think uh, they've been firm. Uh, Secretary of State has, has said there is no trade space. There's no compromising security principles and diplomatic human rights principles, the principles that have, that have kept the relative peace uh, in Europe since World War II, the principles that say nations are sovereign. Big nations are sovereign and small nations are sovereign. Those principles are important. Ukraine is a sovereign country, which we know 
President Putin does not agree with. He, he, he doesn't recognize Ukraine as a sovereign country. He, he thinks it's really just part of part of Russia. Um, and as your as your reporter, as uh, Ian reported a minute ago, the Ukrainian people are determined. They are ready to fight. It's going to be a hard fight. There are going to be a lot of people, a lot of Russian soldiers dead, and there sadly will be a lot of Ukrainians dead. They're taking it seriously. It is a it is a challenge to them. Uh, it's only gotten worse with the with the all three borders now with the Russians going into Belarus. So it's now also on their northern border. So this is a challenge for them. They're ready to fight. Uh, and that is a calculation uh, that is now in President Putin's head and President Biden's head as well. But I, I want to ask you, Ambassador, since uh, this, was, this was a country you served under two presidents, President uh, Bush, George W. Bush, uh, and President uh, Trump, you were our ambassador, acting ambassador to Ukraine. President Biden yesterday, he stepped in it. Uh, you know, that comment at his press conference where he said, talking about Russia, it depends on what it does. It's one thing if it's a minor incursion and then we end up having a fight about what to do and not to do, uh, meaning seem to invite a minor incursion. And there was a lot of cleanup after that by the Secretary of State, by the White House press secretary, by the president himself. Uh, in, in fact, it caused alarm among European allies and, of course, inside Ukraine. Ukraine's President Zelensky tweeted the following in response, saying, quote, there are no minor incursions in small nations. Uh, how big of a mistake was that comment, do you think, by President Biden? Did it, did it change the calculation about, uh, that's right on the razor's edge about this war uh, or, or peace right now? And did the White House do enough to clean it up? Terry, words do matter. And people listen to the president of the United States very carefully. Uh, and when he makes the point that there is an invasion, if there's an invasion that we will respond, that's the, that's the message. That's got to be the clear message that if there are military units, if there are military forces that come across the border from Russia into Ukraine, it has to be very clear that that will generate that will that will provide that will generate a response that is severe, that is harsh, that is unified on the part of allies, um, that will 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 de be designed to deter. That is the overall goal. And so words matter. How we state that determination, the unanimity of allies, and the willingness to impose those costs if any troops come across that border. So it was a pretty significant mistake. Earlier this week, you mentioned that NATO must make it clear to President Putin, these are your words uh, I've got here, that the costs of invading will be much greater than the benefits. So, you know, we talked about sanctions. What does that actually look like? What would be decisive for Putin as he makes this calculation that we could do? We've talked about the various economic sanctions. We've talked about the military unpredictability of uh, any time you invade an, uh, a nation um, with military force, that's unpredictable. You cannot tell what's going to happen there. What, what he will also see, what this President Putin will also see, is more military resources, more weapons coming to Ukraine. He will also see the United States reinforcing the Eastern allies of, of NATO. So he will see, President Putin will see the a response that is not what he's after. That's not what he'd hoped to have. What he'd hoped to dominate Ukraine. He will be doing the opposite. Ukraine, as again, uh, all the reports indicate, Ukraine, Ukraine is going to oppose. Ukraine is going to resist. Ukraine is going to fight back. And if he does, if President Putin does invade, he will pay a bad price. And in the end, in the end, Terry, he will not win. He will not prevail over, over Ukraine. And, and so here's the $64,000 question people uh, ask. Why is he doing it? Th this is really pushing all his chips in the middle of the table because, as you pointed out, domestically, there's a possibility. Look, he's always uh, arresting and sometimes sh uh, having, uh, you know, there, there are opponents who get shot and killed, uh, jailed. He's uh, looking at the unpredictability of war. Why is he doing it? What's, what's his game here? It's a great question, and no one knows the answer. No one knows what's in Mr. Putin's mind. But what we know is what he said. What he said. Uh, he has said in, in a long article that he wrote last summer, 
he has said that you know, that uh, Ukraine is not a real country. Ukraine is really just part of uh, of Russia. Um, we know that's not the case. We know that uh, that the Slavic Christian civilization, culture, uh, religion began in Kiev. Began in Kiev. So Ukraine is is an older society um, than Russia. Russia, you know, there there's a there's a uh, there's a cathedral uh, built in Kiev. Uh, in the center of in the 11th century, and at that time, that beautiful cathedral was was constructed, reflecting a real cultural value, a real maturity. Um, Moscow was a forest; uh, there was no Moscow. Um, this this nation is proud; it's proud of its history. Ukraine is proud of its culture, its language, um, and it will resist. It will resist. President Putin is challenged by that. If Ukraine succeeds because of this pride, because of the values that Ukraine has, if Ukraine succeeds in becoming a, uh, a, a, a normal European nation, successful normal European nation with a democracy, an economy, um, that challenges President Putin. He knows that the Russians will look over at their brothers in Ukraine and say, how come they get to be Democrats, how come they get to choose their own leaders? How come they get to associate with, how come they get to travel in Europe without visas? You know, how come they get all these benefits of being European while we Russians don't? That's the challenge that, that President Putin is worried about and that he, he doesn't know how to deal with. So he wants to make Russia great again. Maybe he could, you know, be a leader on the economy. Russia still makes nothing that anyone in the world wants to buy. They punch holes in the ground and sell what comes out. No, no goods or services come out of there. That might be one way to make Russia great again. But he's simply, it seems, choosing this path. Uh, Ambassador William Taylor, thank you, as always. Uh, we'll probably be talking to you in the coming days and weeks. I know you'll be busy. Thanks. Thank you, Terry. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.